Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is Golden Radiology High Yield Review for USMLE Step 1. In this video, we're talking about Pete's cardiology. As a reminder, all the content in our Step 1 videos is based on the 2019 edition of First Aid. As I mentioned in a previous video, the newborn in distress vignette can be challenging because there's just so much that can be wrong with the baby. An easy way to organize one's thoughts is to split the possible etiologies into cardiac and palm. In a previous video, we went over the left side of this chart, or the pulmonary etiologies, and today we'll review the cardiac one. If they're hinting at a cardiac etiology, they'll usually give you a classic heart sound or a congenital syndrome, etc. In the cardiac column, you have both cyanotic heart disease and acyanotic heart disease. The cyanotic ones are your blue babies. They have a right to left shunt. This means that deoxygenated blood from the right side of the heart will somehow bypass the pulmonary circulation and be pumped out to the rest of the body. These babies will present with cyanosis early, with the exception of mild tetralogy flow, which can present later. Because they are bypassing the pulmonary circulation, they will have a patent ductus arteriosus or other defect keeping them alive. These are the babies that are going to require surgical treatment ASAP. The babies with acyanotic heart disease are not going to present with early cyanosis. Instead, they'll present with nasal flaring, grunting, and a very good hint is sweating with feeds. These babies have a left to right shunt. So these kids won't have any issues getting oxygenated blood to their body. However, they have a ton of blood volume being shunted into the pulmonary system. If uncorrected, these left to right shunts result in pulmonary hypertension and eventually in Eisenmenger syndrome, which is reversal of the left to right shunt into a right to left shunt. And these children will then present with cyanosis. Here are the five T's of congenital heart disease. Let's quickly review them and then I'll show you a mnemonic. Truncus arteriosus occurs due to failure of the aortical pulmonary septum to form and split the truncus into the pulmonary artery and the aorta. As a result, you have one common trunk. Transposition of the great vessels is when you have the aorta and the pulmonary artery switched around. The aorta comes off the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery comes off of the left. Tricuspid atresia is when the tricuspid valve is absent, so blood can't flow into the great ventricle. Therefore, the only path for blood out of the right atrium is into the left atrium through a patent foramenal valley. Tetralogy of flow is a little more complex and we'll discuss this in more detail later. Total anomalous pulmonary venous return is when your pulmonary veins drain into the right atrium or vena cava instead of the left atrium. This results in oxygenated blood mixing with deoxygenated blood. This mixed blood then goes through a patent foramenal valley to get into the systemic circulation. So the way to remember this is one, two, three, four, five. One for one trunk. Two for two vessels are switched. Three for tri. Four for tetra, or four things are wrong. And five for five words. In this video, we'll talk about these two because they have classic appearances on imaging. All right, so let's start with a question. Full term newborn with cyanosis. Most likely diagnosis. Tetralogy of Fallot, isolated VSD, Epstein's anomaly, or total anomalous pulmonary venous return. Okay, so this was Tetralogy of Fallot. Tetralogy of Fallot is the most common congenital cyanotic heart disease. Classically, they'll show you this picture, and the buzzword will be a boot-shaped heart. What is responsible for this shape is the right ventricular hypertrophy you see here, and that actually pushes the apex of the heart up. There are four components to Tetralogy of Fallot pulmonary stenosis, right ventricular hypertrophy, an overriding aorta, which we'll get into in a second, and a ventricular septal defect. Pulmonary stenosis is emphasized here because I want you to remember the degree of pulmonary stenosis determines how bad the tetralogy of Fallot is. All right, so let's talk about tetralogy of Fallot. So I have a cartoon here of a normal heart and a Fallot heart. And we have all of the components here. We have the pulmonic stenosis. We have the right ventricular hypertrophy. We have the overriding aorta and the ventricular septal defect. Let's talk a little bit about overriding aorta. That means that the aorta is going to sit right at the level of the ventricular septal defect, which means that when blood goes through the ventricular septal defect, it can go straight into the aorta. So let's talk about why pulmonic stenosis determines the degree of severity for tetralogy. In order for blood to leave the right ventricle, it's going to have two paths. It could either go through the stenosed pulmonary artery, or it could go through the VSD. 
the more stenosed the pulmonary artery is, the more resistance you're going to have. Uh, and so the blood is going to choose the path of least resistance and go into the VSD. The more blood that bypasses the pulmonary circulation, that means there's more deoxygenated blood in your systemic circulation. That means you'll have a greater degree of cyanosis. Okay, so here is a mnemonic to help you remember Tetralogy of Fallot. It's proof to me you have Tetralogy of Fallot. With P for pulmonic stenosis, R for right ventricular hypertrophy, O for overriding aorta, and V for ventricular septal defect. Okay, just to round out Tetralogy of Fallot, a couple more buzzwords and associations. Tet spells, these are episodes of cyanosis after crying or feeding. The big thing to know about this is that they improve by squatting. Why does this make sense? Well, squatting is going to increase your systemic vascular resistance, which is going to decrease your right to left shunt. So if we go back to this cartoon, as we mentioned, the blood is going to choose the path of least resistance. So if there's greater resistance through the aorta, then the blood is going to preferentially shunt through the pulmonary circulation. And then a very classic association to know for Tetralogy of Fallot is that it's associated with DeJour syndrome. Okay, next question. Full-term newborn with cyanosis. Most likely diagnosis. A. Tetralogy of Fallot. B. Isolated VSD. C. Epstein's anomaly or D. Transposition of the great vessels. Okay, so this is transposition of the great vessels. As we mentioned, this is when the aorta and the pulmonary artery switch places so that you have the aorta coming off of the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery coming off of the left ventricle. There's a high association of TGA in diabetic moms and the buzzword radiologic finding is an egg on a string. Okay, and this is just a little bonus. This is Epstein's anomaly. It's associated with in utero lithium exposure. The buzzword is atrialization of the right ventricle, and the image you need to know is the box-shaped heart. If you just see a very, very large heart that takes up most of the chest, and the vignette suggests lithium exposure, you should think Epstein's anomaly. Uh, so that's it. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.